Hi, I'm Jonathan Gohl. When you take a picture with your camera, you're exposing onto film an image made of light. Now that image remains invisible until it's developed. And developing film is what this show is all about. Now the point at which a photographer first develops a roll of film is always a day to remember. It marks an advance. The mastering of this craft of developing puts you in control of your images. To some extent, for the first time, it allows you to say, I did it myself, and that means a lot. Now this is what film looks like before, well, before it comes out of the box. Before it goes through the camera, it looks like this. It comes out of a little cassette. It's dull on one side and shiny on the other, and it's the dull side of the film which has the light-sensitive emulsion. Now this is what the film looks like after it has been developed. Here you can see it. At the time of the exposure, uh, and an invisible latent image is retained by the light-sensitive surface of the film. The dark parts and the transparent parts on the negative now are the reverse of the tones you see in real life, but printing will reverse those tones back again to produce a positive print. Here it is. This is a print from this negative. Now, I'll tell you what you need as we go along, but uh, first, you're going to have to find yourself a roll of film, roll of black and white film. Now, this show is not about color developing. I'll do that another time. This is strictly about the development of black and white films. Now, I shot a roll of Plus X film, and kept, I saved the instruction sheet that came with the film. Once again, this proves how useful this can be. This gives you all of the instructions you're going to need for developing the film. Now, different instruction sheets have different instructions for different films, so you must keep and use the one only that comes with your film. This instruction sheet gives you everything you're going to need to know about processing and developing film. Developing and processing, those are interchangeable terms. They both mean the same thing. In any case, the instruction sheet gave me a list of the chemicals I would need to develop the film, so I went out and I bought them. Here we go. First, it said I needed a developer. So I went out and I bought the recommended developer, in this case, Kodak's, D76 film developer for black and white film. The next chemical that's needed is the acid stop bath, and that is here, and it comes as a concentrate in a small bottle, which you mix later on with water. That's the acid stop bath. The next chemical you need is the film fixer, and I bought Kodak's Codafix solution. And the last chemical you need to shorten the washing time is a chemical called permawash or hypoclearing agent. There are many different kinds and I used, in this case, Heiko's brand of permawash. Now each chemical must be mixed up separately ahead of time in a beaker such as this. You follow the instructions that are on the package or on the bottle and they're very easy to follow. They give you complete instructions for just the right way and at the right temperature at which to develop these films. It's very easy. It is a little bit like following the instructions in a cookbook or a recipe. Some chemicals come powdered, such as the developer, and you really should mix those the day before you're going to actually develop the film. That's because it takes a little bit of time for the chemistry to really settle into solution. The liquid chemicals you can mix just before you develop, but they really should be developed, bef they really should be mixed before you develop. In any case, the chemicals are then transferred to brown bottles. And I transfer the uh, liquid now mixed a developer from the beaker to this brown glass bottle and labeled it carefully. The acid stop bath I put in a plastic brown chemical bottle, expressly made for photographic chemicals. It's labeled and dated. And then, of course, the fixer as well, after it was mixed, was placed into this bottle. Now, for the mixing of these, you will need running water, plenty of it. You'll need it for the mixing of chemicals, you'll need running water for the washing of films, and you'll need running water for the cleaning of the utensils afterwards. And running water, of course, you can find in any kitchen or any bathroom, which is where you really can do all of your film developing. Now let's take a closer look at that film developing sheet. This is a modest blow-up of it here. The developing sheet, the uh, data sheet, gives you a tremendous amount of information first about processing I'm sorry, I'm sorry about exposing the films, which I've told you before, but then it also gives you a complete list of all the chemicals you're going to need to process. And most importantly, it gives you, and I can show you this in this closer view, a time and temperature development table. This is the key thing you need to time the development of the films. Now, if the developer happens to be cool because of cool room temperature, 
you develop for a longer time. If it happens to be warm because of warm room temperature, you develop for a shorter time. The recommended temperature range for development with this film happens to be from 65 degrees to 75 degrees. Now all you do is look up here at the developer you're using, and I am using D76, which I want to dilute one to one with water. Here it is, D76 one to one. And I notice that the recommended times are eight minutes, if it happens to be 65 degrees, up through five minutes, only five minutes if the temperature is 75 degrees. Well, the temperature here happens to be 75 degrees, so I now know that five minutes has to be my developing time. Well, this brings us to a very important piece of equipment in developing, and that is the photographic darkroom thermometer. There are several kinds you can get. The first one is called a dial thermometer, such as this. It's a stainless steel, highly accurate thermometer, very durable, a little on the costly side. You can get the somewhat less expensive glass spirit thermometer, such as this. They're a bit more durable. I'm sorry, they're a bit less durable being glass, but they are just as accurate. And finally, you shall need a light-proof film developing tank. It's no big mystery what it is. It's a simple tank like this of simple construction that allows you to process the film. This is it. It's a tank that contains a reel, sometimes stainless steel, uh, onto which you put the film and the lid. You can also use plastic tanks such as this one here, which allows you to, uh, you, it takes a reel which is very adjustable for different sizes. If you want to use 120 film, for example, with the stainless tank, you have to use a 120 sized reel. At any rate, the stainless tanks are the most durable. This one is almost 20 years old. And all developing tanks have one thing in common, and that is an exceptionally nicely designed lid. The lid enables you to keep the film in darkness like that, and at the same time, it has a hole through which you can pour the fluids in and out, but that hole admits no light. It is a light-proof tank. Now, loading the exposed roll of film onto the tank, onto the reel, sometimes proves a problem for the novice photographer. All it really takes is a lot of practice, but I'll show you how to do it. Here's the reel, and here is a dummy roll of film. I'll tell you about this in a second. It's very hard to do this because in real life you have to do this in the dark, and you have to be able to know what it looks like even though you can't see it in the dark. Well, let me recommend that you buy an exposed roll of film from a store, a bad roll of film, and use this as a dummy or a practice roll so that you can, without worrying about its cost, Practice loading the reel in a fully lit room, watching what you're doing so that you can really get used to it. I'll show you how that's done. This is, imagine now that we're in complete darkness. Just imagine it, and that this is a roll of exposed film. I open it up with a can opener. I pull out the film. Now this, this should really be done in darkness with an actual exposed roll of film. I unroll it like this, and I tear off five inches or so of the leader. There is no picture on the leader so you don't need it. I then take my developing reel, regardless of the type, and I make sure that the spirals, the end of the spiral on the reel, are facing into the film. Notice how I'm holding the film, by the way, in the palm of my hand with the emulsion side down. Now I take this part, which is the end of the film, the cut end of the film, and I insert it into the center of the reel. There's a center part, only one center part where this can go. Many reels design are designed with special clips and springs to help hold the film, which is handy. At any rate, you start pulling the film around, and it begins to expand into the stainless steel spiral, the beginning of it. As you might be able to see, the reel is going in at a curve. It's buckled. You then start to wind it on like this. Now, it's at this point at the beginning that many of the problems occur, and this is why you need to see this done in the light first, because sometimes the film gets all mangled like this, and you need to be able to know that and see it, and visually to have an understanding of how to correct it by unrolling an inch or two and then slowly beginning to roll again. Now I continue turning the reel. I move it back and forth like this a few times. That helps ensure that it's going to be um, completely free of any binds, and if any binds develop in the loading, I can detect it by doing that. Try and keep your fingers off the surface of the film because, of course, you would then get fingerprints. At the end, you cut off the spool and you discard it. You then take it, the reel, put it in the tank, and you would then be ready to do this. You would then be ready to develop the film. Well, I'm going to load a reel of film right here 
an honest to God exposed roll of film, but I'm going to do it in the dark at the same time. How? I'm going to use something called a darkroom changing bag, a film changing bag. This is it. It looks like a garment. It looks like a big winter t shirt. In any case, it has two holes for your arms here, and it has a zipper on the bottom and a double walled light proof construction. Into this, you place your film, you place the lid and the cap, you place the, the tank, you place a reel and your can opener, seal it up, stick your hands in it, and in this portable, foldable darkroom, you can load film in broad daylight. Now the first job is find the can opener, find the reel, and find the film. It takes a little groping, ladies and gentlemen. I found it. Now I pry the lid off. Done. Tear off the leader. Done. Get the reel. Make sure the spiral is facing towards the film. In this case, the film is in my right palm, emulsion side facing down. Insert the beginning of it. Secure it, and very slowly and carefully start to wind. Got it. No snag so far. Oh, there's one. Got it. Fixed it. See, I have a mental impression of what this actually looks like because I've done it in the light so many times. I shake it back and forth, you know, that little moving the film back and forth to check it. Keep my fingers off it. Nearing the end of it. Now tearing the end of the spool off. This gets very fast with practice, but when you're uh, doing it for the first time, don't try and be in a hurry. It's in the can. The lid is on it, and... Presto Changeo, in this tank, is an exposed and ready to develop roll of film. We now go over to our developing sink and process it. Now, usually the directions say pour the developer in and start timing. Um, I'm not going to do that. To help promote even development, I first want to give the film a water soak, a first water bath, not a developer. I'll take water which is already mixed up at 75 degrees. I'll take the tank and pour the water in. This has to be the same temperature as the developer to follow. And you use the thermometer, of course, to check and to make sure that all the chemicals will be exactly the same temperature. But since they're always at room temperature, I mean, they're usually the same. Agitate it, keep it in here for about 30 seconds, and then use this time to prepare your one-to-one -one solution of D76 developer. Now, I have a beaker here and a mixing spoon. I take some pre-mixed up stock developer solution, just mixed up, and I pour out four ounces into the beaker. Now, this is an eight ounce developing tank. So four ounces of developer mixed with four ounces of water will give me a one-to-one -one solution of developer. There it is, eight ounces, mix it up, and I'll be ready to go except for one thing. I now have to time very accurately that total five minute developing. You can use your watch, you can use a kitchen clock. I'm going to be using a developing timer and I will set it, not for five minutes, but for 15. 15 to 10 will be my five minute developing time and then the, I'll use the rest of the time taking off to time the rest of the steps. The developing step though is the most critical in terms of time. Now, I'll get ready. Give myself a few seconds advance time there. Turn on the sweep second hand. Pour out the water. Like that. And then pour in the developer at the very moment, at the very moment that the thing hits zero. Okay, here we go. D76, one to one, going into our film developing tank through our light proof fluid admitting top. Put the cap on the lid and agitate for the first 15 seconds gently, regularly, so that the developer goes all around the film and starts developing all the film at the same time. And then wrap it like that to remove any air bubbles that might stick to the reel. That sometimes happens. From here on, I have been instructed by the developing instructions <laughs> to agitate for five seconds every 25 seconds. So when the hand gets up to the five second mark, I agitate again. In the meantime, I start getting all the other stuff ready that I need. Stop bath, the fixer, the hypo clear. Okay. 
what's the developer doing at this point? Well, it's developing the film, but it does it in a very simple to understand way. Right? Five seconds development. The developer is taking the exposed silver salt, silver nitrate crystals, which the film has been made of, and it is changing those silver nitrate crystals to metallic silver, but only those crystals that have been exposed to light. If they have not been exposed to light, or much light, then they will not get much development. Now, the more light that has hit the film, the stronger the action of the developer will be upon it. Now, underexposed film cannot be overdeveloped and thereby compensated to produce a really first-rate negative. You must get very good exposure from the beginning. Now, the need is an exposure to get enough light to expose the shadow areas of the scene, the darker parts, and yet at the same time to not overexpose the highlight areas. If you do that, you're going to have a very difficult to print negative. So proper exposure is very, very important for, well, ultimately proper development. It's all part of a continuous chain. Now, as it happens, the highlight areas of a film develop much faster than the shadow areas. Those are the parts that receive the most light, the action of the developer strongest on them. So you do not want to overdevelop the film, because if you do, those highlights will so overdevelop far more than they need to be developed that you'll wind up with an extremely contrasty negative that is very hard to print. So you want to time the development to be exactly on the nose, and some photographers even develop for about 20% less than the recommended time to make sure those highlights are not too dense. By the way, I'm agitating this. Each time I agitate it, I give it a quarter turn like that. It really shouldn't take more than five seconds. Other things that you can use to help in the development process. First would be funnels to help pour the chemicals back into the original bottles. Here they are. I use one for the developer, and then I use one for all the other chemicals. And I like to have funnels that contain a little filter screen in the bottom. It is an essential, but it's helpful. It helps keep can't forget this. The filter screen helps make sure that little bits and particles of dust won't find their way back into the developer or wind up on the film. Next, you need beakers. Now, you don't need a whole array such as we have here, but it is handy to have at least one beaker to mix all of the solutions in, separately, of course, and to contain some ready water at the right temperature. Um, but it is a little bit handy, I must admit, to have some of these extra beakers. This has to be re regular. You have to do it the same all the time, otherwise the development will not be even. If your water happens to be rusty water, or very hard water, or chemically impure water, you should mix your developer and the other chemicals too, but especially the developer in distilled or bottled water. Now, there's often a big debate as to whether to store chemicals in glass bottles or in plastic bottles. The glass bottles are harder to find, but they are very good for chemicals. They're brown to help uh, prevent light from uh, hitting the uh, developers, which might break it down a little bit. But the plastic bottles are very good because they allow you to squeeze them somewhat, to squeeze the air out of the bottle so that the chemical is always up to the top of the cap, and therefore uh, there'd be no air in the bottle to oxidize the chemical. Um, if your temperature of the chemical happens not to be where you want it, you can heat it up or cool it down in advance by placing it in a water tub such as this and running hot water or cold water through it as you need to, and then using a thermometer in the, temp in the bottle like this to help find out when it's the temperature you want. Now, in a few seconds, our film is going to be totally developed. I'm very excited to see if this comes out. I have to have ready for the next step the stop bath. Now, I pour the developer out. And the development time stops. That five minute is up. As soon as, as soon as the stop bath is poured in. The stop bath, being an acid solution, as opposed to the developer, which is a base solution, instantly stops the development action and prevents overdevelopment. You should agitate for about 15 to 30 seconds. This is a less critical time step than the development. You can use plain water for this, but plain water doesn't stop the development quite as fast, and acid stop bath is really, I feel, the best way to do it. It's yellow, by the way, uh, because it has an indicator chemical in it which turns purple as the chemical becomes exhausted, as the stop bath is exhausted. Uh, that's how it gets its name, indicator stop bath, and that's why I like to use it. Okay. Next comes the 
fixer, also called the hypo. Pour it in like that. And note the time because this should be in here for from two to four minutes. We're going to fix it for two minutes because it's fresh fixer. Fixer, when you pour it in, should be agitated for the first minute thoroughly. The job of the fixer is to render insensitive to light the film. You see, there's a whole lot of unexposed and undeveloped silver halides left in the film which have not been affected by any chemical up to now, and if I were to pull the film out in the light, it would become exposed and eventually turn dark. So the film has to be fixed in order to remove uh, and change and render in not sensitive to light anymore, those, uh, that unexposed silver. We're almost up with the two minutes. Now, fixer, you can only put about 20 rolls of film through a quart of average fixer, some a little more, a little less. But if you overuse the fixer, it will no longer function. So to keep track of what you're doing, you should put a label on the bottle and notch as you r run rolls of film through it until you get to 20 and then throw it out. You don't want to overfix film because that also affects its permanence. You don't want to underfix film because that will affect its permanence. Follow the times the manufacturer gives you. Just have a little bit more time left on this. You can always tell Fixer, by the way, from the odor it has. It has a particularly sharp odor. It's not a hazardous chemical to touch, but it does smell distinctly different from all of the other chemicals here. Pour it back into the Fixer can, and uh, at the end of the day, of course, I'll use the funnel to pour this back into the bottle and cap it tightly. At this point, you have to wash the film. Now, the film manufacturer recommends about a 20 to 30 minute wash of the film. That is an awful lot of water, and you can buy a chemical called HypoClear solution, HypoClearing agent, which helps to reduce the wash time. Now, the wash time, regardless of what it happens to be, has to be, again, at the same temperature as the other solutions. I've got this set at 75 degrees. I'm now going to open up the film because it is now insensitive light. It has been developed, and I'm going to put it under the water. Now, the hypoclearing solution is here, ready to go. You want to always have it ready. The instructions recommend a minute for the first wash, a minute for the hypoclear, and a minute for the final wash. Now, for absolute permanence of the film, I like to give that final wash about five minutes. But I'll give it one minute here so that we can get it up right away in time to show you what the film looks like. All right, that's the first rinse. Now, the hypo clear. It does almost what its name implies. It helps get rid of the hypo from the emulsion of the film, and it also helps to, helps to partially dissolve out the other chemicals that are in the film. It makes the silver nitrates and the old fixer left in the film more soluble in rinse water so that it becomes easy to clean out of the film. You see, the film is a little bit like a sponge. It absorbs everything that comes into contact with it. Agitate it for a minute. Now, this is a step also in which the time is not extremely critical. I mean, you can do it for a minute or two minutes, but I wouldn't do it for more than two minutes. They mean what they say for the most part when they give you a recommended general range of times. Now, pour it out and finish up with a good flow of clean, fresh water at the proper temperature. If you have a tank such as this, you can run the water directly down through the hole in the reel, and the water will come up surging through the films in the spiral of the reel. But you still should dump it periodically like this. to ensure that every part of the film gets completely washed. That's extremely important. An underwashed film, again, will not be a permanent and long-lasting film. Keep dumping the tank. Now, although I would recommend washing this longer, as I said, for now, I th we're going to hang it up. And at this point, there's one last thing, which is an optional, but still, I would consider a useful step for the drying of the film. If I were to hang up the film now, directly from the reel, it might get water spots on it from the water drying and little droplets all over the film. To prevent that, you use a special little chemical, very inexpensive, called wetting agent. And the directions suggest one pint of wetting agent. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
one drop of wetting agent per pint. Here's a pint. The drop. Mix it up with a chemical spoon like this. Pour it into the film, and it should stay here for about 15 to 30 seconds. The wetting agent simply allows the water to run off the film more easily so that it, it tends not to dry as water spots on the film. If that happens, it becomes very, very difficult to get it off the film when dry. And you will also find that those spots can print onto the prints that you make in the darkroom. Get it good and clean. This solution is a little bit like a soap solution. Now, we're just about ready to dry the film. Now watch this little piece of magic. Unreel it. Like this. One developed roll of film. When you dry film, you should take it to a very clean and very dry and dust-free place, such as a shower stall with the water turned off, of course, and the shower curtain drawn so that there's as little air circulating around it as possible. You don't want dust to settle on the film. You crimp, you fold over the top of the film like that, hang it up with a clothespin from a wire, take another clothespin, they make special film clips for this, by the way, you go down to the bottom of the film and weight it. That encourages straight drying of the film. Now, let me dry off my hands here. Now, it takes about an hour, it takes about an hour or so for the film to dry. When it is dry, you will want to cut it up into strips of six frames apiece. Oh, would you like to see what the films look like? Look at that. Okay. You would cut the films into frames of, into uh, six frames apiece. Like this. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you put them into a negative envelope to preserve them and save them for the next printing show. So go out and shoot some film, and I'll see you next time.